Hello there. Today we are going to be talking about engagement. There is a, a genre of YouTube videos which can be summed into hub sound videos and such video usually comes something like this. You see the bike, someone takes a long hard spin on the on the cranks and then they allow the rear wheel to coast for a while and you are listening to the sound of the rear hub. In this particular case it's Novatech something 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 which was branded by Core. What you're supposed to take out of such a video is the intensity, the volume and the frequency of your rear hub and whether you like it or not because for some reason people like their hubs to be loud. The most important part is that recently, and by recently I mean the last 10 years, uh, there is a, a little bit of a undercurrent of liking high, uh, high engagement hub. And what does high engagement really mean? Well, let me show you. This Novatec hub has 24 points of engagement. What does it mean? Uh, the ratcheting mechanism in this hub, in this free hub, is getting locked 24 times for each revelation of, uh, of the wheel, which translates into how much of a uh, void or loose movement you have in your cranks before uh, the entire drivetrain start, starts transferring uh, torque. And you can, for example, check this here. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. What does it mean? It means that if I'm on a 1 to 1 gear ratio, I have to uh, rotate my cranks at most 15 degrees before the entire drivetrain starts to operate. Now if I have 48, or I know 360 points of engagement, that would be one degree of rotation. Now, I am on a gear of 50 to 12, which means that I have to rotate the cranks something about 4 degrees. I didn't really calculate this volume, but something about 4 degrees before the, uh, before the drivetrain starts to transfer torque. So why is that important? Well, it's not all that important, especially if you're riding on a road bike, because there are you are then using, by its very nature, very high gears, so engagement is pretty fast even on an 18 engagement point hub. However, let me show you something. There you go. This is the lowest gear on this bicycle, that's 30 by 26. Since there are only 24 engagement points on this hub at this point, this is the amount of free stroke where I'm not pulling anything. As you can see, each time the click on the rear hub actually happens. I can pull the the rear uh, the rear wheel forward. Now, obviously, if this was a mountain bike and you had something like 30 by 50 here, uh, this effect would be even more pronounced. If I switch to a higher gear, you'll notice that it's not as visible. So there you go, we are on the highest gear, and as you can see, I almost can't do any free stroke because I'm instantly triggering the engagement. Now why is this important? On a road bike it's completely irrelevant, however, if you are riding on a, on a mountain bike and you are dealing with a difficult terrain where you need to negotiate uh, some sort of feature that requires you to play with your cranks all the time and having fast engagement makes this uh, moving through such obstacles much easier. But why this long uh, introduction to this video? Well because a few weeks ago I bought this. This is a free hub for uh, Novatec hub and because Novatec is making uh, uh, their free hub essentially out of parts which are quite cross compatible I intend to put uh, this free hub on uh, this uh, on this hub 
And the reason why I'm doing it, this is because one, it's 11 speed, although that's um, accidental really. And two, uh, this free hub here is an old, uh, old design of Novatec, which uses a 24 tooth uh, splined ring inside to engage with the poles, while uh, this uh, free hub is a four pole design that meant for a newer design of their uh, free hub, which uses 27 point. 27 uh, tooth uh, ring inside of the free hub body. So if you mesh one of these free hubs with old school hub, you are getting essentially four times more engagement uh, than you would usually get uh, at a slight cost that your free hub is going to explode and self destruct. Why? Well, as you can see, I have four poles here since only one pole is going to engage with the 24 tooth ring because other poles are out of phase, they are meant for 27 point uh, ring then only if one pole engages and three others are just coasting and each time I'm uh, going to freewheel the pole that engages is going to uh, switch and I'm going to get four times more engagement but uh, once the pole is engaged uh, the free hub is going to be asymmetrically loaded which means that it's most likely going to destroy it in uh, one of two uh, possible uh, failures one is going to be that I'm going to mangle the, the spring here and that's common um, for the four poles which might cause me a uh, rather uh, awkward return home because my free hub is going to stop working or two, one of the poles is going to crack and it's going to die. So if everything I'm going to do here is going to go along with my plan and nothing's going to explode because everything is so overbuilt because it's steel, I'm going to have four times more engagement and a much noisier hub and you're going to see the difference in the end of this video. So I'm going to work. There you go, this is the difference between both three hubs. These are the bodies. You can see the arrangement of pole is different on each and every one. There are four here and three here. So, let's mount this one to my hub. Alright, job's complete. Now take a, take a note how just little play there is, or little free stroke there is. And as you can see, because I am now four times, I have now four times denser engagement obviously it's going to engage at a four times lesser angle and this is quite important if you're doing some technical riding now let's take a look at what happens at the, at the highest gear and you can't, here you go, at the highest gear and you'll notice that you can't even move the crank even a bit to the back because there's essentially no discernible free stroke here. So, here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, I don't really want to count. This is the hub sound. Remember that's 96 point engagement Novatec hub, which is going to self-destruct at some point. Of course you should ask, what's the point of this? Well, most likely I'm going to return to the original configuration because my mm, experience with high engagement hubs is that they are quite cool to brag about it but at some point the drilling sound, the high frequency buzzing sound becomes annoying and you have to dump it down or just sell the hub away. At least that's my experience when I wrote 120 point engagement hub and 72 point engagement hub. On the other hand, the 36 point engagement, which is kind of standard now, really doesn't bother me at all. I think I just don't like very loud hubs, so I might be able to make this work somewhat. Although I'm having second thoughts about this because it just might end up at some sort of 
self-destruction. Remember, just one pole is engaged at uh, any time. So this is not like the hydro hubs. Everything is steel. So this uh, this unsymmetrical loading on the free hub most likely is going to destroy something in the future. Anyway, this is uh, everything I have to say about this this topic at this point. I have a high engagement surprise in in the future in about two or three weeks, but. It hasn't yet come from China. So, if you like this video, consider uh, liking it and sh uh, sharing it around. Well, whatever. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and see you on the next video.